welcome back to Clown Wizard Studios. Uh, this evening we are going to do a very important banner in the Westeros universe. We're going to do House Targaryen. The last design I did of House Targaryen was back in 2015, and it was a very good, uh, very good design, one I was very proud of, and one I used for a lot of different... Uh, banners, including personal banners, including uh, King Aegon II, uh, Rhaenyra Targaryen, and House Blackfire, as well as you know, as well as House Targaryen. And so, and that was about you know five years ago. And in the and in the meantime, I have grown as an artist, and I've actually gotten a little bit better. And so now, looking at that, looking back on that design, I realize like. I could do a little bit better, and so I re, uh, redesigned it, and now we're going to turn it into the new uh, Targaryen banner. Now the first step is actually, first thing I have to do for anything else is draw the shield templates onto the page. Then we tape it down, and then we start to draw. Now, in anticipation of such an important banner in the history of Westeros, possibly the most important banner in the history of Westeros, after all, the new uh, spin-off series for Game of Thrones is uh, House of the Dragon. Which not, they're not making a spin-off series for Stark or Lannister. Of course, Game of Thrones was kind of like a Stark and Lannister series. So, in anticipation of this banner, what I did was actually went back and uh, read the entire Targaryen section of The World of Ice and Fire. Literally yesterday and today I was reading that last night and this afternoon, because when I was doing the Stark and Lannister uh, Stark and Lannister banners. I had read a little bit, but not not that much, so my knowledge was kind of spotty and incomplete. So now we're just going to start with the size 8 pin. And, I'm gonna use, and because the background uh, is going to be all black, I'm going to use like the heaviest line that I, uh, line weight that I have just because it's uh, it's going to kind of blend into the background anyway. Yeah, let's stick with eight. So the three-headed dragon represents Aegon the Conqueror and his two sisters. Visenya and Rhaenys and he first married Visenya and then took Rhaenys as his second wife now among the Dragon Lords, this was not without president, although it was not common. And as I was reading the history of the Targaryens, the thing I uh, read was basically before the Doom of Valyria, when the 14 Flames, which is the 14 
volcanoes that exist around or exist in Valyria basically exploded and wiped out the entire civilization before that uh, Valyria was expanding its empire throughout the throughout Essos and short and they had actually established drag uh, Dragonstone as kind of like the westernmost outpost of Valyria and there's actually two there's actually two other houses I actually switched over to a five uh, five pen actually Gonna give me a little bit more control, I think. Uh, there's actually two other houses that are of Valyrian descent in Westeros, and that is House Valarian. And if you know your Westeros history, you'll know that. There have been more masters of ship and admirals of the royal fleet that have been held by Valarians than any other house in Westeros. And they actually live on Driftmark, which is an island very close to Dragonstone, but not, <clears throat> but not part of it. And the other house is House Celtigar. And their banner is a field of crabs, red crabs strewn on a white field. And so the uh, Targaryens were never the most prominent, important, or powerful house in Valyria. And they actually moved, and they actually relocated to uh, Dragonstone, basically moved everything, dragons, their entire family, and everything they had to Dragonstone. When Danny's the Dreamer, as she was came to be known, had a dream that prophesized the doom. And I believe they moved like 14 years before the doom happened. So when the doom hit, pretty much uh, not every single uh, dragon lord died in the doom. Some of them lived in like Neo Volantis and other parts of other parts of Essos however at the, once the doom happened and the Valyrian Empire collapsed the people who had been living under Targaryen rule for a while I think it was hundreds of years uh, Valyrians were slavers, and so they were not really well liked by people in Essos, in the Free Cities. And so a lot of them ended up getting, uh, ended up dying because the power vacuum, because once the Valyria was destroyed, it created a power vacuum and resulted in a lot of Dragon Lords getting wiped out. And so I was kind of thought it was interesting that I think this is because I was always curious why uh, Aegon had chosen to take uh, take over Westeros and unite it into one realm. And he may have been inspired to do that because uh West, uh, Valyria was already eyeballing Westeros for conquest. Anyway, 
So, and all him and his three sisters each had their own dragons. Aegon rode Balerion, who is also known as the Black Dread, who ended up being the largest dragon that ever existed, at least in Westeros. And from and they only had a few they had a few houses who were sworn to them at when they landed at King's uh, what would be King's Landing at the mouth of Blackwater Bay. And the three of them set off. Well, let's see. A little bit of history before we get into that. Westeros was seven kingdoms. And at the time when Aegon was set to conquer Westeros, the Riverlands were actually in control. Were actually under the... Uh, domain of the Iron Islands, actually, of uh, House Hor. I believe it was Harwin Hor was uh, the king of the islands and the riverlands, and he was stationed at Harrenhal, the biggest castle in all of Westeros, which had just been completed, and it had taken a long time to complete. A lot of resources and a lot of manpower. And the other king in the area was Argalak, who's uh, Argalak Dondarian. Now, the interesting thing about House Dondarian is their sigil, uh, banner and sigil is this black uh, crowned stag, the same, the exact same sigil and banner is House Baratheon. And Dondarian, uh, I'm sorry, not Dondarian, Argalak. Excuse me, it was not uh, Argalak Durandin, it was Arg uh, or Dondarian, it was Durandin was his name. And House Durandin was actually uh, king of the, they existed in the Stormlands and in Westeros since the Age of Heroes. So a very, very old house. And Argalak actually offered the hand of his daughter in marriage to Aegon. To which Aegon responded, well, I already have two wives. What do I need a third one for? And Aegon's best friend and childhood friend was, uh, I believe it was Ori's Baratheon. And he was actually a baseborn, uh, baseborn, friend of his who ended up becoming his uh, for the first hand of the king so that means the first hand of the king for the Targaryens was a Baratheon and the first king after the Targaryens was also a Baratheon and so what he did was he refused the offer from King Argilac And instead, offered the hand of his friend Ori's, which insulted Argilac. And he actually, uh, the mess, the messenger that he sent to Argilac with his response, uh, actually had his hands chopped off and stuffed into a box. And Argilac sent the hands back to uh, Aegon, saying, "These are the only hands you'll receive from me." 
with that, Aegon sent out a hundred ravens across the realm, proclaiming himself to be the king of uh, Westeros. And shortly thereafter, began his conquest. He started in the Crown Lands. And had a small host that he divided up into three. Him and his two sisters uh, took off on their dragons. I don't remember the names of the dragons that Rhaenyra and Visenya rode. Uh, And the first stop on the conquest was to Harrenhal, which had just been completed. And Heron the Black is pretty defiant about this, uh, about bending the knee to this new king. And he was prepared for a siege since he had a was on a lake so they had a inexhaustible supply of fresh water they had tons of food stored up and they had a lot of uh, and they had a sizable army in there to withstand a siege however Egon was not interested and taking it Heron Hall by force with an army. So what he did was waited for nightfall and then descended upon Heron Hall with Beleriand. And the soldiers said you could the entire castle lit up and the five towers glowed orange in the dark like five giant candles and the tower started to twist and melt very much like candles and because the house whore was actually uh, ironborn the lords of the riverlands were not thrilled with their uh, with the King Hor, because he was not a nice person and not a benevolent ruler. So when the Targaryens said they were going to... So when the Targ uh, Targaryens said they were going to un you know, unseat them and take over, they were eager to, eager to get rid of them. The next person to be dealt with was King Argilac and he heard about Harrenhal and rather than burn in his castle he actually rode out uh, he actually rode out to meet the Targaryen host and ended up dying with his sword in his hand and a curse on his lips. And even though I read all this yesterday, it's even some of the details, just because I've uh, gotten, I read up to the part with uh, the Mad King Ares and realizing like, yeah, a lot of the details start to get even kind of fuzzy from reading 300 or 250 plus years of Targaryen history. And after taking down the Stormlands, uh, so what happened was, uh, once King Argilac was uh, defeated, his wife said that they were going to defend Stormland to every last man. 
However, the actual people uh, manning Storm's End and defending it were less eager to die than she was. And so they actually um, turned against her and presented her chained, bound, and naked to the Conqueror. At which point, Ori's Baratheon, in order to make a... He covered her, he took her, uh, covered her in his cloak, and ended up uh, marrying her, and took the sigil and banner of the stag of Durandon for himself. So that's why the uh, Baratheon's banner is the same banner as House Durandon. So that is the dragon. Looks pretty good. I'm actually going to stop it right there.